Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 754. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 753 to 755, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, we're, we just got done with 753. We're doing 754 and 755. We're all doing the same things with three different methods. In 753, we extracted, we have the same data set, but we used filter to extract um, invoices 30 days past due. Well, one problem with the filter method is that if we wanted to change the number of days, for example, 30 to 45, we had to rerun the filter. So in this video, we want to see how to do it with formulas and have everything just automatically update. All right, here's our data set invoices 30 days past due, which means they could be one day, two day, three day, up to 30 days past due. All right, first thing is we need to figure out what today is. And we're going to do this with the function today. Totally awesome. Every time we open the workbook after entering this argumentless function, it'll tell us today's date. We can then, from that date, because it's a serial number, we could say, hey, take that date, minus 45. And it will give us 45, a date 45 days before today's date. I'm going to leave this as 30. Notice we have a label here also that's joining that date, that text, and the dash. That way, when we change this, our formula, our label updates, which is quite convenient. Now we need to count. We are going to have a, an array formula down here that will extract records. But first, we need to count. <coughs> Excuse me. If there's 26 records or invoices that are past due, as we copy our formula down, we need the formula after the 26 record to show a blank and not show any more records. Now I want to show you three different ways to count the records in this data set that fall between these two dates. I'm going to show you two methods that work in Excel 2003 and earlier, and then one that uh, is preferable if you have Excel 2007 or later. All right, the first one is we're actually going to use count if. Oftentimes we switch to some product, but I, th I think this count if will be a little bit faster calculating. Count if. Now, count if only can count one criterion. We have two, so what are we doing here? Well, let's check this out. I'm going to click in that cell, Control Shift down now, and F4 to lock it. And comma, the criteria, I'm going to say greater than or in double quotes, greater than or equal to n double quotes ampersand this earlier date. Now, right now, if we count this, it'll count everything above this date, including this one and any dates above. Well, that's not quite what we want, but that's our starting point. From that, we will subtract. And we'll do the same count if range. Oh, a second count if. But now we're going to say double quotes greater than or equal to and double quotes, ampersand, this one. So now what we've said with the second count if is, hey, count everything this date and above. Well, now if we have all of the dates above this, including all the ones above there, and then the second count if counts just the ones this and above, when we subtract them, we'll get the difference. Enter. Oftentimes, uh, when we get into situations in earlier versions, we switch to some product, which is excellent. It handles arrays. But in this particular circumstance, that count if will definitely work. But in um, the sum product, equivalent would be, well, we have the same two logical tests, or almost the same. And we're going to get a series of trues and falses, and we need to convert them to ones and zeros. So I'm going to use double negative open parentheses. The first test will be anything in that range. Control Shift down our F4. Is it greater than or equal to that? OK, that so far is exactly like our count if. But now, that's our first array, double negatives. Uh, we'll convert that to ones and zeros. Ones are true, zeros are falses. Now, comma, we need to multiply, because some product will multiply arrays. Double negative open parentheses, same range again, F4. But now we're going to say less than this. Earlier formula over here, we were subtracting two to get the difference. But here, we're just getting all the trues and falses. That date is not included. And we're only interested in the two, the ones below this for this particular true false right here. This becomes an and criteria. So it's when this is true and this is true, we'll get a 1 times a 1, which then some count will count as a 1, 26. Finally, in 2007 or 2010, 
if you have large da data sets in particular. This will be the fastest calculating amongst all of these. I'm going to get that range. Count ifs just has an S, so you can put your criteria range and criteria range 1 and criteria 1. And then you have criteria 2, etc. So you just say greater than or equal to, comma, control shift down to F4. And then same thing, explicitly comparing it to that range. So we say less than this, because we don't, if the invoice is exactly on this day, it is not late. All right, and so that's probably the best one. Of course, since many people still are using 2003 and earlier, then these other formulas will work. All right, now we're going to start on array formula. All right, now we have our um, count. I'm going to use this one in our formula down here. Now, as we copy the formula down, we need to uh, show a blank after row 26. So I'm going to start with an if, and then I'm going to say rows. Rows is great. I'm sitting in F11, so I'm going to type F dollar sign 11. So that cell reference is locked, colon F11. That one is not. As I copy it down, this will be locked on 11. This one won't, so it will increment higher. Rows will give us 1, 2, 3. That's a way of incrementing a number inside a formula. Anytime that is greater than this, F4 to lock it in all directions, then comma, what do I want? Well, if it's passed, then I want a blank. Otherwise, and now we have to look up all of the records that meet these two criteria, and we will use the index function. Index, well now, notice four columns, four columns here, so the array, which is the lookup range, I'm going to click there, control shift down, and F4, F4, only the row reference lo lock, not the column, so when it moves this way, that dancing dance will move to the next column. But when I copy it down, it's locked. Comma, and now here's the tricky part, row number. Well, we have lots of row numbers. As we can see, there's 26 different row numbers we need. So we need only some of them. We only need one row number at a time. So we're going to dump all of the row numbers into the small. The small function, we, we'll give it an array there of uh, or, um, row numbers. And then we'll use the k, this number incrementer to extract row number, a new row number each time we copy it down uh, a new row. So the array, well, we're going to have to simulate the trues and falses we did up here. So I'm going to say if anything in this range, control shift down our F4 locked in all directions. If that is greater than or equal to this F4, then what do we want? Well, we have another uh, condition, so we have to use another if. I'm going to paste that range. Anytime that is less than this one right here, locked in all directions. So there's two ifs inside of the small. But remember, the small is all we need to do is row numbers there. All we did was give it the true-false condition so far. So now, logical test, there's two of them. Anytime both of those are met, then what do we want? We want a bunch of row numbers. So I'm going to, and I'm going to paste that same range. It's that same range right there. Well, that won't work because that'll give me row four, five, six. So from that, I'm going to have to subtract row. That won't work either because four minus four is zero. So then we have to add one back in. All right, that's the value if true. Close parenthesis. We do not need the value if false. It'll just show up as false inside the small, but small, uh, that'll be fine. Close parentheses on that. Close parentheses on the next if. And now we're back to the small. And now, we, if you want, you can highlight this. Condition, condition, row number, right? And hit the F9. And if you scroll through this, oh, I don't know how I can scroll through this. Oh, there's a 365 right there. You can see, oh, and a 587 and a 566. So you can see that there's a bunch of falses, but only the numbers will the small deal with and extract. So we have 566 and then 587. So it will, as we copy the formula down, extract just one row number at a time. Now I'm going to control Z because I don't want to leave that hard coded there, comma, and the number incrementer will be our rows. Copy. That's the K. So it extracts the first row number, second row number, etc. Close parenthesis on the small. Cl we have our row number, so close parenthesis on that. We have our value of false, close parenthesis on that. And this is an array formula, so you have to hold Control Shift. I'm actually going to copy this before I enter it, because we're going to use it 
in just a moment for something slightly different. Control Shift and Enter. Control Shift Enter says is you telling Excel on the, that you're entering an array formula. That curly brackets is Excel telling you this is an array formula. Now I'm going to copy this over. The formatting is messed up here, so I'm going to point to the smart tag and say fill without formatting. And then I'm going to copy it down. You can copy it down however far you want. You need to have it, at least enough rows to accommodate the maximum number of um, records that will be extracted. OK, and so now we have our uh, totally dynamic setup here. If I change this to 20, 19 and 19 records are ex uh, extracted. How about 5? How about 1? There's exactly two records. And sure enough, it's exactly just that date right there. So that totally dynamic, right? Five days late, there they are, looking over there and extracting them. Now, one last thing I do want to uh, show you. Here we used Control-Shift-Enter in a curly bracket. If you're in 2010, there's a great new function. Now, I'm going to do a little trickery here. I'm going to clear this um, clipboard, and then I'm going to paste this. Whoops. Of course, I cleared it. I didn't mean to do that. I'm going to copy this put it in edit mode and control V. Now very carefully, we are going to replace all of this with the aggregate. But now I want just some of these pieces in here. I want just that logical test. And I'm going to control C. And I can see it shows up right there, right there. Then I'm going to highlight just the next uh, series of trues and falses, control C. I can see it shows up there. Then I'm going to need this row. These are the row numbers here, control C. I show shows up over there. And then the rows, control C, it shows up right there. Now I'm going to highlight all this and type aggregate. Aggregate, ah, great new function similar to uh, subtotal, except for there's some array formulas down here you can have. So I'm going to select the small, because in essence is substituting for the small, comma. The option I'm going to use is ignore error values. And finally, comma, the array. Well, here now I'm going to build, simulate. Uh, remember, I need row numbers. And I have these two logical tests. So in the numerator here, I'm going to put open parentheses and click on the rows. And then I'm going to divide that, because those are the numbers that the aggregate needs. It's just like it's the small. But I'm going to divide this by a bunch of trues and falses, right? And then only the numbers from the row that get a true in the denominator will show up in the aggregate array. So I'm going to open parentheses and then open parentheses again. One logical test, close parentheses times open parentheses. Second logical test, close parentheses, close parentheses. <coughs> Excuse me. The trues and falses multiplied by trues and falses. Anytime there's a true times a true will give us one which then will help us get the row number from the numerator. All right, comma, and then the k, just like the small. We're going to uh, give it that. Close off the aggregate. Close off the row number for the index. Close off the if uh, there. And then no control shift enter. I'm just going to control enter, no curly brackets. Copy it over. Probably say fill without formatting, and then copy it down. And they should give us both the same thing. right? And now as we change this to uh, 4, uh, 16 days, we can see that it's extracting the same records. And there you go. Extracting whatever number of days past due invoices you want from a data set. In our next video, we'll see how to do the same thing with advanced filter. All right, see you next video.